Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this video, we're going to be creating our very first Redux store. Now, this is going to be totally insignificant in the larger project, but it's good to understand the foundations of what you're doing and why. So we're going to be creating and getting our code started in this video. Okay, to get started, we're going to create a simple React app using Create React App. If you haven't installed Create React App already, you want to do npm install hyphen g create hyphen react hyphen app, okay? So after you get Create React App installed, we simply just need to do Create React App, and then we're going to give this just the name of Redux Test. It can honestly be named whatever you want. This is just going to be a temporary code base to get us up and running and actually get something going where we can write some JavaScript. Okay, so we can now change directories into CD Redux test, and we can now type npm start to get this application up and running. Okay, so now I'm going to do two things immediately. I'm gonna open up our inspect and tab over to our console, make this font size nice and big so you could see what's going on in my console right here. And I'm going to open up this project into VS Code so we can start writing some JavaScript. And now I'm just going to head inside of app.js. Okay, so what we want out of this is to, well, we have app.js, which is just a very simple React component. And for the most part, we're gonna ignore all of this because really we're just looking for some open space to write some code. Now, before we get started any further, we want to go ahead and install Redux, which is as simple as heading to your command line and typing in a new window or a new tab for the same directory, npm install Redux, okay? And we're not installing Redux React just yet, just Redux. Because in this particular example, even though this is a React site, which we're going to elaborate on, well, it's actually just going to be using Redux itself and not the packages from Redux React, which is an important distinction in which we're going to have to go over later what is involved in which package, okay? So now that we have Redux installed, we can start importing some stuff from Redux. For instance, the only thing we really need right now is what's called the create store. Now create store is going to be a function that is going to accept some reducers and create a Redux store out of them. So let's go ahead and do import, and then we're going to import from two brackets. We're going to import create store from Redux, okay? And this is going to be the very first bit of Redux we're using where it's simply going to take, like I said, a reducer, which is actually just going to be a function. I'll explain all about reducers in a minute. And what it's going to do is it's going to create a store object. Now this isn't just an object with your state in it. It's actually quite a bit more and of which we're gonna be going over as we go. Okay, so we're importing create store. Now, I'm gonna make sure I can see my console over here and I'm gonna go all the way down to the bottom. Now what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be creating a new function. And this function is just going to be a function. And while this is going to be our first reducer technically, you don't need to think about it as a reducer because chances are you might not even know what that means yet. We just simply need to think of this as a function. For instance, if we wanted to have this be some sort of hello world, we could do a new constant variable named hello. And this is just going to be equal to an arrow function, okay? And this arrow function can just simply return a string of hello. Now this seems extremely unrelevant to what we're doing, but bear with me here. Keep in mind, this is just a function. All it's simply doing is returning the string hello. Now what we want to do is use our create store to create a new store. So we're gonna have const store is equal to create store and create store accepts a function. And now create store is going to be looking for a function of which we can provide with hello. Okay. So nothing really crazy here. We're simply creating a very basic function that's outputting a string. And now we're using create store, which will create a store out of our function. So why are we doing this? 
Well, at this given point, you may think of your state tree as a big old object full of other objects, full of other objects or arrays or data or whatever, right? It's all of your stuff that we saw like in the last video in the level up Tuts Redux store. However, this store is with create store is simply just going to be a string, a single string. So this store overall is going to be a store, a state tree that just has one string in it. So this is the most bare bones store you could possibly create. However, if we did something like console log right now, and we logged out our store, we can see that our store is, like I said, much more than just an object full of our state. And in this case would just be the text hello. We have dispatch, get state, replace reducer, subscribe. Now these are all important, specifically get state and dispatch. And subscribe could typically be important. However, when you're using React with Redux, you typically don't use subscribe that often. But what it does is it allows you to look for data changes, right? And uh, refresh accordingly. Now what dispatch does is it allows you to run actions which are going to change things in your state tree. Again, uh, this can get pretty jargony, so bear with me here because I will say some of these words, but we're going to go over in depth what they do in plain English. And then lastly, we have get state as what I'm considering the most important ones here. Now get state is going to get our actual state, as in if you wanted to see what the state of our current Redux store looked like, you would use the get state method. So if we come back to our application and just simply console log get state from our store, store.get state, you're going to see it just simply says hello. Let me actually make this side by side here so we can see this a little bit better. So we created a function that simply just returns the string hello. Then we used create store to create a store out of that function and had it output the text hello. Now typically in Redux, you see your state as a big object. And in this case, it's a string. So one way we can sort of make this feel a little bit more like what you'd expect is to make this into an object. We can just simply have this be a welcome message and the value of it is going to be hello. Okay, so now you can see our state is now welcome, hello. So this is a bare, bare, bare bones Redux state, but this is it. We simply just have a function returning an object, we're creating a store, and then we're outputting the state using store.get state. And if this seems sort of pointless to you, don't worry, keep ahead. What we're going to be doing in the next video is, well, we have our hello function right now, which is technically a reducer, but we don't know what a reducer even is yet. So in the next video, we're actually going to be building out hello a little bit more and turning this into uh, what a more common reducer looks like. And in the process, we're going to be talking about that word reducer, what it means in the context of this application. And we're going to write our first action, which is going to be very exciting because it's going to allow us to interact with our store and modify it. And when I say modify, I don't actually mean modify the store. More info on that in the next video. And it's going to allow us to create a new store with new information instead of modifying our store. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you want to learn more about Redux and React, head on over to leveluptutorials.com forward slash store and purchase this series or become a pro. This series is going to be for absolute beginners who have experience with React or Redux and want to learn more about the basics and want to understand Redux better. Because let's face it, it can be confusing with all of these jargony words and things like reducers and actions and dispatching and stuff like that. So follow along in the next video as we dive into sort of what a reducer is in the context of our application and how we can start writing reducers and actions. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.